This is John for the Everyday Fan Sports. I have the pleasure of being on the beat with former Major League catcher Ed Hearn. How are you, sir? Well, John, I'm hanging on, baby. <laughs> you you are I hanging on. That, I wrote that book, Conquering Life's Curves, uh, well, back in 95, 96. And, uh, you know, I thought it was a good title because it kind of fit. And here I am still all – oh, look at you. There you go. And here all these years later – uh, today I sit here in this chair with you, battling a pretty big curve. So I've lost my kidney, my third kidney, and I'm on dialysis, and I'm anemic, and I'm struggling. I'm looking for a living donor, and uh, I ain't as good as I once was. <laughs> well, you're, it's amazing that you're still a very positive guy. I've, I've read interviews, I've or I've seen interviews, I've read articles. You're you're amazingly positive. I absolutely want to talk about your health issues, but if you'd indulge me with a few baseball questions first. Um, no problem. Even back in the day, you were a great amateur athlete. You were great in high school, and you had played a bunch of different sports. Then you kind of struggled in the Philly system. You came out of the Philly system. You won title, 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 including the World Series. Yeah. At that point, did you think like, wow, this is, you know, this is going great. This is easy. I've won a title the last four years. It's that's a great question, John. Uh, yeah, some people say that I might be the only person or baseball player to you know to win a ring at each level in consecutive years with the same organization, including the World Series. And then other people will tell you that, yeah, the Mets traded me the next spring and they haven't won yet. The curse. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know that was that was much more a much more of, of the fact that the Mets had had been building through a lot of number one picks because they were they struggled for so long. Finally, Frank Cash had come in and really made a nice team through great one, number one picks. And I, they, I fell into that thing, that, that time frame. And uh, did I have much to do with it? I don't know. Uh, I think the thing that most thing that I did, the greatest thing that I did was I persevered and, uh, you know, I ended up getting to play my rookie year in the big leagues with that 86 mess team. Well, you could say you're not sure how much you had to do with it, but when Gary Carter went down, you filled in and the record indicates that you did quite well and the team did quite well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gary was, of course, he's a hall of famer. He's just, he's passed from the brain tumor. Our, our only child is named middle name Carter after him uh, in respect for the man that he was, in my opinion, the family man and all. Not not perfect by any means, like any of us, you know. But he was, um, it was a good two weeks. When he went down that Sunday afternoon, oh, my goodness, there was 25 news reporters around my locker from in I'm New sure. York. You know, what what, do you, how, what, how, what are you going to do? I'm like, me and me, what I going to do? I can't be Gary Carter. But I can be Ed Hearn. And if I be at if I'm Ed Hearn and I do what Ed Hearn can do, you know, we'll survive. You know, but I can't fill that man's shoes. No way. And you know, two weeks later, uh, I remember a great scene in my mind, and probably maybe a few others in the training room. Gary's on the training table getting that thumb iced up, you know, get approaching, ready to come back. And literally guys are gone by. Hey, kid, maybe you ought to ice that thing in a couple more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary was a huge competitor. And, he, and later on after the season, unfortunately, in my opinion, you know, he said uh, because of the way, you know, Ed played and our team played, it probably cost me the MVP that year. Oh, wow. Sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah. hey, you were just doing your job to the to the I was. And it was that's probably what vaulted me into the you know, into that winter, you know, where there was interest in, you know, some clubs trading for me. Um, and it ended up being Kansas City and you know, in the long run they gave up uh, David Cohn as a triple A pitcher and but I got the call that night in spring training, only five days left. I said, It's all you got for me as a minor league pitcher. <laughs> We all know David went on and had a great year, you know, several great years, and, and a lot of them in New York. Mets, Yankees came back to Kansas City. They still couldn't keep him. But I, I think a lot of that had to do with 
the person that David was, he didn't fit the Kansas City mold. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Midwestern. Sure. It just, but anyway, so it was a great, uh, you know, to have, to have playing the major leagues and you're, and in your rookie year playing a World Series team. Amazing. Following your, your, following your you know, starting job. You know, 26, you know, I mean, I persevered through from high school into, you know, eight years of minor leagues with, with some major injuries. I don't know if I should have played, but I persevered. And um, I was in a great spot. And then, uh, then I got married. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you, did you collect baseball cards when you were a kid? We couldn't afford, we couldn't afford to play baseball cards. I was lucky to get a pack or two here and there. Uh, I grew up about 10 minutes from home in Stadium in Vero with Dodgers train. Okay. Particularly when the when the Reds came in, uh, I got lucky and was able to get off from school and go see those guys play. I used to get a few signatures. You know, I have one book. I found it about eight months ago. And, uh, you know, what I... When our son was born, and I don't know if he he has very few autographs, but what I did do was I tried to influence him in taking pictures with some baseball players, and he's got probably three dozen Hall of Famer wow. pictures with him, starting at four weeks with Mickey Mantle. Wow! Wow! It's about as good as it gets. Well, I, I yeah. ask you that. I ask you that because I one of my favorite baseball cards ever. Is I believe it's a 1988 of you with the Royals, the catching gear on. It's a tops card. I just thought it was one of the coolest cards ever. Is that the one where I got the glove up or uh, yes, a pretty background and all? Yes, yes, I agree, yeah. John. As a matter of fact, this weekend a couple of friends of ours came over and they wanted to help us because we've gone through all these health issues and 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 I said, yeah, I need a lot of help in my office. I'm just I can't get anything done. And uh, I said, but we're going to start, if you can, with catching up my fan mail. And uh, these two folks are, you know, a little younger than us. But uh, we went to that fan mail and, and that the guy that was helping us went right to that card and said, oh, it's a pretty card. And uh, as a matter of fact, is that there it? it is. And look at our son. Oh, wow. Wow, that's cool. Isn't that cool? So that is cool. That's awesome. That's it's right here on my desk. Nice. So yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It's a pretty card, almost like a fake background, and and I certainly look better than I really was. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let's let's talk some serious stuff. I know you you've had some health issues. Um, right now, you're looking for a kidney. <laughs> tell us, can you tell me the process? What your end is, and then what is the end for somebody who um, wants to help? Yeah. Well, I've been battling this for 35 years. I've had uh, two successful transplant, and this <clears throat> this last one here is uh, is failing. And uh, I've been on dialysis about four or five months. And so, on my side, I have to be cleared at a transplant center, which I am at the University of Minnesota at Fairview, physically that I'm able to get another transplant. <clears throat> so I got that done. And now uh, I can be put on the cadaveric UNOS waiting list, which is the one that for years they've been at, encouraging people to sign your driver's license. But that takes averaging three to five years for somebody on dialysis. Wow. And 20% of people on dialysis die each year. So that makes the mortality on dialysis about five years. So that you that list isn't getting it done. And so about eight years ago, a man donated to his daughter and began to, uh, he couldn't, but he, he couldn't donate to her, but he found that somebody else that could. And so they started this program called the National Kidney Registry, where if you wanted to give to a kidney to me, oh, sorry, John, you're in great health, but you're, you're not, you know, a match, so to speak. Now, they, you would go through all the medical if you're medically fit, then they would put your name in the database and all your data, more importantly, and they would find somebody who needs a kidney that's perfect for you. You would make that donation. 
anonymously or however you wanted to do it, paired exchange, and then I would get what's called a voucher. And, and then they, my data would go in after that, and they would search for a really good match for me. And the great thing about this is I can, the average wait time is about two to three months for a match. Okay. A, a decent match. But I can wait, uh, it's about uh, three to four months, I believe, their average time of finding what is called a low effluent mismatch really good match which may allow me to once we have the transplant to reduce the antigens the uh, Im immunosuppression and immunosuppression in the, in the transplant field causes a lot of problems okay. so uh, i'm just i'm you know people you know you've seen on facebook i'm not a guy i was raised to let my bat do my talking for me and it's hard for me to say hey you know i could use a kidney and you know uh, but there's a lot of people putting stuff out there on Facebook about me. I think that's how you probably found me. And um, the biggest concern, biggest challenge today is two things, I think. Uh, we've changed a lot in the last 20 years since I had my last one. Uh, society's become more I, me, I, I, me, me. And uh, 20 years ago, it took no time to get a good match. And uh, today, I think, you know, and then secondly, COVID. Yeah. It scared people. And thirdly, people don't understand, you know, they were okay. Well, when I'm dead, that might be okay. See, I don't eat my core. Now they're like, well, what if I, oh, if I donate one kidney, I'm, what if I, oh, my kidney goes bad? Well, you got two, you only need one. Right. And if yours goes bad, they now have the program set up where you go right to the top and, and you would hardly miss a beat. But the education in all this is not there. But one thing that is happening right now, it happened two days ago. That I found, I found out about this about a month ago. Uh, a fellow with the uh, climbed him and fifteen people that have already donated a kidney, and a couple surgeons and transplant surgeons and nurses climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in in Tanzania to to bring attention to the fact that hey, we just donated a kidney in the last within the last year or two, and we just climbed nineteen thousand feet on a mountain it took seven days and this is all to bring awareness to the fact that there's nothing to be afraid of i mean you know any surgery you have whether it's you know you're taking out your tonsils well something could happen but uh, this kidney thing when 20, 20 years ago my last kidney donor you know left with a scar about <laughs> 10 inches around the back today this is just laparoscopic right it's amazing so it's just education. Uh, I hope I'm around long enough uh, to be a part of educating our country, maybe the world, about all these facts of how things have evolved. Because you know, we have 100,000 people waiting for a kidney that are approved. Another eight or 900,000 people that aren't even yet approved. So people are on this list and dying. And, you know, if, you know, I've traveled the country for 25 years as a keynote speaker doing share my life, my journey, and the lessons I've learned. And I went from the penthouse to the outhouse and almost quit when I lost everything, my life, my career and my health. But uh, I, I truly say that that is what happened after that is a, I'm so much more proud of than even being a baseball player that uh, came back from that and was able to use it to inspire, encourage, and uplift all the people that I really didn't know all over the country. Well, you're an amazing man. I mean, beyond the baseball, obviously, I, I first saw you playing baseball. I was a, yes. a fan. I was a catcher. I loved catchers. I especially loved the backup catcher because I wasn't any good. So, when, you know. Hey, well, speak for yourself on that one now. No, 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 no. I'm just saying when you were the backup catcher for the Mets and you came through, I was screwed. I love Gary, Gary Carter, obviously a Hall of Famer, but you know, the fact that you came through like for, for backup catchers, that was amazing. You know, we well, love that. You. Yes. And obviously, uh, you know, obviously you were a starter as well, of course. Yes, sir. Um, but it, it's amazing. Your, your story is so positive. I've read I your did. book, obviously, as, 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 you know, as I've said, as I've shown, fantastic book. I had the pleasure of meeting you several years back at the event yes. we talked about. Um, it's just that you're an amazing guy. And I really, I, I, I have 
I pray for you. I encourage everyone to check check out the website that's going to be up here on the on the link. We're going to show that and to help this man out because he's got so much more to give. You're such a positive guy and such a positive force in the world. I appreciate it, man. Well, you know, we're all gifted differently. You're making an impact. And you know, I'm trying to make an impact. And, uh, you know, together with our different talents, we can make an impact, and we do. So I appreciate you having me on. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can do this again when I'm feeling a little bit better. And, well, that's what I was going to say. When you're better, when you get this kidney, and, and I believe in my heart of hearts that you will, and you will come back from this once again, I am going to bug you for the, the update interview at that point. You you knock yourself out, and let's do it. I would look forward to it. And, uh, you know, I, I've always believed this. Uh, uh, all we are is seed planters. You know, people say, oh, well, you can change this or that. You know what? My belief is that God can only change make major change like that all we do is plant seeds water and fertilize occasionally help people pull some weeds and uh, that's our job and that's what we do with different talents right john i agree i agree and god does miracles you're a living testament to that you you've had yes. you know three kidney transplants you're a living miracle and you're spreading the word and you're such a positive guy and i really i i so much appreciate your time i really i thank you for your time and I will be back uh, when you're when you're back on your feet completely. I will be back for that update. Very good, brother. You keep swinging, man. You too, as well. Don't don't give up the fight, my friend. No, no, no. We'll keep swinging. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir.